I ain't got but one page tonight. One page. Psalm 35. Thank y'all for being here tonight. And uh, this one in the uh, precatory psalms, one of them where there, there's a, several psalms where the psalmist is, in, in most cases it's David, but the psalmist is praying the wrath of God down on his enemies. <laughs> and so this is one of those that fall in that classification tonight. And um, there's some discussion about who the psalmist is, but I'm going to just go ahead and settle that for you. It's David. Okay. David wrote this psalm. All right. <laughs> so th th there you go. All right. So let's look at this thing. We're going to break it down. It's a big psalm. We only got a little while. We're going to break it down. We're going to try to, we're going to, try to make some sense out of it. it. It's really broke up into three sections. Okay. I'll, I'll give you the sections and we'll, We'll go back and get them. Verses 1 through 10 is a section. Verses 11 through 18 is a section. Verse 19 through 28 is a section. And I'm going to show you how you, you're able to break them up, this psalm, okay? Okay? Y'all good with that? Look with me in verse 10. We'll come back and we'll get the psalm, but look with me in verse 10. It says, or, or we'll start verse 9, excuse me. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee? Which do, so you see, what, what would you say is going on there? It's easy. Yes, he's, he's praising God. He's being thankful. Exactly right. That's exactly. So we see that here at 9 and 10. Look at verse 18. I will give thanks in the great congregation, I will praise thee among much people. So this is the second time we see him talking about praising. And then at the very end of it, verse 27, let them shout for joy and be glad and favor in the righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let them, the Lord be magnified, which is pleasure in, pros, uh, in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and praise thee all the day long. Okay? So that's the way you break this psalm up. And that's what you're looking for. When you're looking for a psalm, you're looking for uh, some type of phrase or idea that's repeated in that psalm. And that's where you're going to see that the psalmist is breaking it. He's, he's making his, pray, his, his break. Okay? Y'all got that? So now let's go back and get it. Verses 1 through 10 is a call for protection from his enemies. David is calling on the Lord to protect him from his enemies. You know, I'm one of, and I know there's a few others in here that's like this too, but I'm one of these people that's, I'm not too scared of, I, I, I try to, I, I I try to take care of things myself, okay? You know what I'm saying? I know none of y'all resemble that. But, uh, but even at that, a lot of times you, you got some fear about what's good. People are attacking you for no reason. You know, we, we've talked about the truck that was sitting on top of my truck yesterday for no reason. I mean, there's 50 parking places, and you, you pick out the one beside of me to park on top of my truck, okay? There was a reason for that, all right? Wanted Marty to lose his mind. Come close. But we need, we need to call on the Lord for protection. And that's what's going on here. David is calling on him to protect him from his enemy. I want you to look at verses 1 through 6. We're going to read them. Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive against me. Fight against them that fight against me. So David's not saying strengthen me that I can fight them. He's saying, you fight them. We're going to see something about this fight, hopefully, if Marty can get going. Take hold of your shield and your buckler and stand up for my help. Somebody help me real quick. Shield and buckler, what, what are we talking about? Yeah, both of them are shields, aren't they? One of them's a little shield and one of them's a big shield. And he's saying, you stand up with the shield in front of me and protect me, Lord. And I thought about uh, 
Ephesians 6, those fiery darts of Satan that, that come at us, and God is protecting us, and he's asking, he's calling on the Lord to protect him. He says, stand up for my help. Verse 3, draw out thy spear also, and stop thy way against them that persecute me, saying unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Now, when he's saying to his soul, he's not talking about his soul, his internal part. He's talking about his life. That, that, that's, that's what he's speaking of here when he's talking about soul in this psalm. Is he's talking about his life. But think about that. What is a spear? Have you ever... I've got all kinds of fascinations. Uh, oh, Alexander the Great. What made him so great? It was the spear men. It was the way they fought. They, they had them long spears, and they were able to hit the enemy. And so that's what's going on here. The, the spear is, is a weapon, an a offensive weapon that takes care of somebody out in front of you. And he's saying, look, you, you take care of this thing. All right? Um, da, 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 da. Verse 4. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. And so, again, they're seeking after his life. And he says, confuse them. And be put to shame. Now, I want you to keep thinking about these things that he's saying there about these things because we're going to see in a minute what they're actually doing to him, okay? Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. <laughs> All right? Let their way be dark and slippery, and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. That, that word there again, that is to pursue. Okay? And he uses that word about them with him. It's the same Hebrew word. They are pursuing his, his life. And so he says, Lord, you pursue them like they're pursuing me. You ever seen a cat chase a dog and another dog get there, or a cat chase that, that dog or something? You know, I mean... Yeah, that's what's happening here, you know. Uh, uh, they're, they're chasing David, but the Lord, he's asking the Lord to chase them and, and, and chase them down and take care of them. So we see that um, uh, God's asking him in the first six verses, defeat the wicked, Lord. Now look at verses 7 and 8. This is going to be why he is requesting his enemies are, are pursuing him for no reason. Look at it. It says, for without cause, they have hid for me their net in a pit, which, thou, uh, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Now, the word dig there means hunt. They have hunted his soul. So, you know, if you're a hunter, I'm not a hunter anymore, but I used to hunt. When you was a hunter, you go out and scout out, and you try to get in a place where you can ambush that dangerous deer. You know, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and you got a gun that would kill an elephant <laughs> to kill that 80 pound deer, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, don't don't want to don't get hurt by that dangerous deer. But that that's the idea here is they're hunting for his life. It's not they're 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 looking at the right place to set the trap. And they're hunting for his life. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let the net that he has hid catch himself unto the destruction, let him fall. So the word destruction, uh, he uses it several times there in verse 8, destruction in the first part of it, and again at the end of it, that word means tempest. It's a storm. Now what's happening, and we're going to see it again, but I want you to, I want you to hear it. What's happening is they're using their mouth against David they're not using weaponry but they're using their mouth and y'all have heard me say it a whole bunch that old nursery rhyme sticks and stones may bake my bones but words will never hurt me they lied words hurt worse than sticks and stones sticks and stones will heal words don't heal okay words break bones the book of Proverbs says a soft Answer turns away wrath. A proper answer will break bones. Words will break, man. 
And so we see that, and that's what's going on here. They, they're, David is requesting that the enemies uh, be taken care of because they're hating David without a cause. And then we done dealt with this, but verses 9 and 10, David promises to praise the Lord for his salvation. Okay, we're not going to reread that, but that's what he does. He promises him that he will praise him for what he does for him. Now look at verses 11 through 18. This is the actual complaint. This is the lament. David proves he is hated without reason and laments because God has not yet delivered him and he's the one that's got to do it. Okay, so, so look with me. Verses 11 through 16 to start with. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I didn't know. So David said, things I, I ain't even thought about. They're laying in my charge. So what are they doing? They're talking, right? Look at verse 12. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my life. Not his soul, but his life. So they're giving him back bad for what he's done good. Now we're going to see what David done. Okay, now, now look what it says now. Verse 13. But as for me, when they were sick, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. He was fasting. I humbled my soul with fasting. And my prayer returned into my own business. In other words, I'm praying for these people right now that are talking bad about me. When, when, when they were down and out, I was on my knees. And I wasn't just on my knees. I was fasting for them. I was putting it up for them. But now they're returning evil for my good. Now look what else he says now. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourned for his mother. Man, I, I, I treated him like he was my mom that was sick. Now, look, he's not telling this person that. He's telling the Lord that. So what? What does David know about God? God's going to know whether he's lying or not, ain't he? <laughs> he's not making this stuff up. All right. Verse 15. But in my adversity, they rejoiced. So instead of, instead of getting in sackcloth and ashes or even praying for him, they're rejoicing and gathered themselves together. Yea, the objects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear and cease not. Now, did they tear him? No, they're tearing him with their mouth. They're plotting against him. They are ridiculing him. They are accusing him of stuff. Man, I'm telling you, is that not, is that not the case? And they, does that not hurt worse than anything else? When you haven't done anybody no harm, and they want to attack you. That hurts. It hurts. Can you imagine how Jesus felt when Judas, Satan entered into Judas? Oh, my beloved friend, whom I broke bread with, whom I have spent three years with, and now you're going to go betray me? Do what thou doest and do it quickly. And then he asked him when he comes in the garden, you're going to betray me with a kiss? Call me friend and rabbi. And you're going to betray me with a kiss. Words hurt, man. They hurt. It's when, when that person that you, you really thought a lot of, when, when they, they start attacking you with their mouth. Look at, look at what it says here. Verse 16. With hypocritical mockers in feast. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. In other words, they were feasting on his flesh. They were just tearing David apart. These verses, David compares what he done to what they done. All of their actions was with words. And compared to that, David fasted and prayed. He gave his words to God. He, he gave his words to somebody for their good, and they're giving their words to each other against him. They're plotting against him. 
Let's go on. Verse 17. Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my life from their destructions. My darling from the lions. Now, we see my darling. Actually, it should be your darling. Okay? But this is my darling. Um, darling is more like a, a, your only son or, or your favorite child or your, your only child, something to that extent. That's, that's what that, that phrase means. Another version says this, my precious life from these young lines. Okay, that's the way it was put. And in verse 18, David gives him the promise again. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. I told you all this uh, um, a few weeks ago. We were dealing with another psalm, I believe it was. And uh, the idea is he actually writes out and goes up and, and he reads this before the congregation at the tabernacle because they didn't have a temple, but at the tabernacle. He, and the, the king, the king of Israel is going to get up and, 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 and read his praise to God how he delivered him. Okay? And isn't that something? What, what would happen if the king of the United States stood up and did that? Uh, they crucify him nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't they? Or her or whoever it might be. Either that or not believe. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Verses 19 through 28. This is the third division. It's the petition. David now petitions the Lord to give justice to those who stir up strife and against those living in peace with them. So, in other words, he's asking for justice for the ones living in peace to be given to those that are stirring up strife. So let's look at it, verses 19 through 21. Let not them that are my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me, neither let them wink their eye that hate me without a cause. Uh, wink is a gesture of malice here in this particular idea. Uh, for they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. So in other words, those that are at peace with them, they're, they're trying to have a war with. That, that's the idea of that particular verse. Verse 21, Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, our eye has seen it. Yeah, God's against you, Mr. David. Verse 26, they, that's the, basically He's asking God to stop those who are using words to stir up problems. That's what he's saying there in verses 19 through 21. 22 through 26. This thou hast seen, O Lord. Keep not silent, O Lord. Be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O Lord, my God according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so we would have it. Let them not say, We have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Now, God's asking David to deliver the righteous. But I want you to look at something with me here. We were talking, um, I, I sat in with Mike and, and his group the other day, and there was a lot of talk about the names of God. So, so in the Old Testament, let me ask y'all, Old Testament, why does the name of God change on a regular basis in the Old Testament? Anybody know? Okay, yeah. It shows his attributes. Uh, it's, it's showing his character. It's, it's praising him for who he is, uh, that kind of thing, like El Shaddai and, uh, you know, uh, all, all them different names has, has a different part of his attribute, right? And so we start out with El or Yahweh or whatever, and then it just keeps, we keep knowing more about God, right? Well, I want you to look at these names that David uses. Anytime, in your King James, how many of you are using the King James tonight? Okay, about everybody. All right, so in a King James, anytime you're looking in the Old Testament, and we'll say the word Lord, 
if you have the word Lord and it's, it's written in a capital L and all little letters after that, that's one different name from one that's written in all capital letters. Okay? If it's God, it's a different name. Uh, if it's capital letters or one capital letter, small letters. Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly right. That's L. You're right. You're exactly right. So I say that. Now, I want you to look at these names that David's using. Verse 23. So just, just look with me. Stir up thyself and awake to judgment. Now, I'm going to say judgment is, is um, that, that particular word right there. He's, ta- he's calling God a judge, but that's not God's name right there. But he, I think he's actually referring to God as a judge because here the word uh, that he uses is, uh, do, 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 hang on just a minute. The word here is mishpah. Yeah, mishpah. That means judge properly. Okay? And then we're going to see judgment again, and it's going to be uh, uh, to pronounce the judgment. So there's pronounce. No, the first one's pronounce the judgment. The second one is to br- judge properly. Okay? One's shafa, and one is mishpah. Okay? So look at it now. Stir up thyself and awake my judgment, even to my cause, my God. Okay? That word right there, Elohim, supreme God, and my Lord, and an I. okay? Judge me. There we see him as a judge again. O Lord, uh, that one there is self-existent one, eternal one. Uh, that's Yahweh. My God, Elohim again. So you, you see the different names that he's, he's calling him there. Just in these two verses, and he does that over and over. All he's calling him all these different names with these different attributes as he's going down through there. Do you think David knew his God just a little bit? Just a little bit. I mean, it's it's, it's amazing. Verse twenty-seven and twenty-eight. I just wanted to show you that because it's it's to me. I just when I saw all these different names. Coming down through this thing, I'm like, David is showing how much. There's a reason he can cry out to God like he's crying out to him. We, I'm going to get to the last two verses. But we, we look at these precatory psalms a lot of times. We, well, we shouldn't pray like that. Look, God's already righteous, is he? He's already all-knowing. And he's jealous over his children. Right? So he's already going to do what he's going to do. You ain't going to change his mind. You understand? You might as well cry out to him for your help because you can't help yourself. And when he helps you, it'll be done right instead of Marty taking the front end off the guy's truck yesterday. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? When God does it, Marty won't go to jail. Okay, yeah, you yeah, yeah. see what I'm saying? <laughs> when we trust in God, he takes care of it, and he takes care of it in a whole lot better way than what we'll ever do, right? Now, with that said, verses 27 and 28. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. In other words, those that are, are right with you and see you working. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified which have pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That word servant right there is bond man. This is the king of Israel, and he's referring to himself as a bond man. Same thing Paul says about himself. He's a bond man. The same thing that we are. We're bond men and women to God. Or we should be, his servants. And so we cry out to our master to help us. But look what he says. He's not done. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and thy praises all the day long. He says, not only am I going to praise you, but I'm going to bring some folks with me. And we're going to come praise you because of what you have done. And we love the Lord. And so we're going to do that. 
folks, it's easy in this world, as we've talked about tonight in our prayer time, it's easy in this world to get all disgruntled, disappointed, and angry, and we want to take on the whole world ourselves. But Lord, we got to let him have it. We got to represent him. In this dark world, we got to represent the light that we're supposed to be. We really do. And that's hard to do. That's hard for me to do because I got a lot of pride. I know y'all ain't there. I got a lot of I got a lot of animosity and pride and and I've always looked after Marty and ain't nobody had to look after Marty but Anita. And and I'm just telling you. We got to learn who we're representing. That's hard. <laughs> That's hard. Amen. I think when we come to these psalms, especially this section right here, there's how many I know you know this. How many of you know that there's more than one book of psalms here in your book in your psalms? Yeah. And so this is the first book of Psalms here. It ends about 41 or 42. And in this section right here, especially the end of this section, continually as David writes these Psalms, he's pouring out his heart for God's help back to him. There's a bunch of them right here. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and tell you right now. In Next Wednesday, if the creek don't rise and the Lord don't take me home to be out of here, we're going to be in Psalm 37, I believe it is. I believe that's right, 37 or 38. So that'll be where we're going to be at because I think it's going to be a continuation of this one and explain what's going on there. All right, let's pray and go home. It's dark and y'all going to have to fight deers and antelopes and turtles and everything else out there. Heavenly Father.